And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hey there, my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, today, we're gonna be going into the lab. We're gonna be playing with Bunsen burners and all sorts of different elements and trying to complete some compounds. Maybe uh, some lab explosions might happen. We're talking about Compounded, uh, a game from Dice Hate Me Games, from two to five players, plays between 30 and 90 minutes, sort of, sort of a Euro hybrid between Euro and sort of American style games. Let's take a look, let's jump in, I'll show you how it's played, and I'll show you my thoughts at the end. One of the coolest components in this game here is the board, the scoreboard, which is the periodic table of elements here, uh, where the, the atomic numbers are actually the points that you get in the game. Really cool idea here to use this as a scoreboard. At the beginning of the game, every player of his color gets his own player board. You get four random um, elements, uh, and you can also see the types of elements between hydrogen, carbon, oxide, nitrous, uh, you know, all of them here. Uh, how many there are in the bag. So you can see it's sulfur, there's only five of them, it's the most rare, and hydrogen is the least rare, it has 30 of them in the bag. Uh, and we have different things that are gonna go on during the game. We're gonna go through discovery phase, uh, study phase, research phase, and lab phase, and you'll notice we have discovery, study, research, and lab test tubes with different values that we start off at here on our own board. So let's take a look at the board and see what we can do. Here's the main board called the research field, which has a bunch of different compounds on them. The yellow cards are sort of starter cards, um, and as the game goes on, those easier cards will get off. Let's take a closer look. Here we take a look at some of these compounds, and we see like nitrous oxide, calcium oxide, things like that. And we'll notice that there's different things here. We have uh, liquid, solids, and gases. So, you know, you can see the gases, you see the solids, we see liquids. Those are sort of the main types. Uh, and notice that on our player board itself, as we showed you earlier, we have liquid, solids, and uh, gases. So we'll see how those sort of play out with your test tubes, how these go. So let's walk through a turn, because um, what you're trying to do essentially is uh, finish these compounds during your research, uh, being able to put some of the elements on there and fill them up, claim that, uh, that compound, and take it and move on. Now, so we're going to go through the different phases, discover, study, research, and lab. Now, in the first round of the game, um, you don't actually do the, dis the discovery phase, but let's just pretend it's not the first round anymore. Let's say we've gone through a couple rounds. So what we do is we do the, go through the discovery phase, and I get to pull out a certain amount of uh, elements from the bag up to however much I can discover. So if my, my, uh, my carrier here is at two, this means I can pull two out of the bag. If I'm up here, I can pull five out of the bag. And as this track goes up, I can pull out more of the bag and I get two. You can only put four here at the beginning of the game. You can fill these up later, we'll show you how. Everyone in turn, uh, the, the, the first player takes this cool little lab key. He's the first player for this round. I would have drawn out of the bag, passed the bag around. At the end of the discovery phase, people can trade all sorts of things. You can trade elements with each other, favors, some special abilities that you can earn over the game. But it's a really a, an interesting thing of, of, of trading with your players and a lot of interaction that happens at the end of this discovery phase. And then you move on to the study phase. Now we see during the study phase, I have a, a value of one here and it goes all the way up to three if you can move this up all the way. So value one means I have one claim token that I can go put out into the research field onto one compound and that's claiming it saying it's mine. So here we go, maybe we're a couple rounds in, and the orange player and the green player have already have some claim tokens on some of the some of the compounds here. And sometimes you can you can place um, some elements on compounds that aren't claimed yet. Sometimes that will happen. But in this case, I'm gonna claim something. So I can look at any one of these and put a claim token, and maybe I claim the calcium sulfide here. Uh, and then everyone goes around that, that can that can put a claim token down in order goes. Once all that happens, if somebody wants to move a claim token in turn order, they could move one. So if Orange wanted to move it here, he could, and so on and so forth. Once everybody has placed and had the option to move uh, their claim tokens, we move to the research phase. Now in the research phase, essentially we are placing elements onto compounds. This is the one that I've claimed that I wanna be working on. Uh, we see I need a green and a yellow sulfur here uh, to put down here. Now, one of the things you can do in the research phase is you can trade any three elements once 
uh, once per turn there, uh, for any element in the bag. So I can take these three hydrogens, put them in the bag, and get out an element of my choice. In this case, maybe I get sulfur. Now in this case, under the research test tube, I can only place two of these elements right now. As I move up, I'll be able to place more, but I place two. So I can place these two, and then it would be the next person's turn in Tornarota. They'd all place as well. That would end the research phase. Then we go to the lab phase. And it looks like all three people, red, green, and orange, filled and finished their compound this turn. So again, in, in turn order, starting with the lab key, you would score things. So let's say I was the first player. Uh, I would take these off, put them back in the bag, take my claim token back, put it back on my board, and I would get six points for it. And I would adjust the score uh, just like that. And then these people would do the same thing. They would get each three points, put the, the, uh, the elements back in the bag, take their claim tokens back. Then we would adjust the scoreboard. I now have six points because I'm at the atomic number of six. And these two guys have three points. Then we would simply refill these from the deck of uh, com compounds. And we would refill it and get ready for another turn. And that would be the end of the lab phase in this case. And then we'd start all over again. The lab key would go to the next person in order. And we'd start through this again. Now, in one scoring that, um, we see that this is a, a solid here, it's orange, which is this sort of this test tube here. So when I completed this, I would move this up one. And so now during the study phase, I could place two claim tokens instead of one. Where conversely, if it was a, let's say, uh, if this was the one I had finished, it's water, and we look for the water symbol in the test tube, and this would have moved up by one. And then in the research phase, I'd be able to discover three elements instead of two. So depending on which compound you actually finish, uh, it changes what you can move up. So essentially we have liquid, solids, and gases, and whichever compound you finish, finish, you move that up and you move up in the track over the game. And at any time, instead of moving up the one that you finished, you can always move up the lab one, which essentially gives you an extra place to put an element, where before you start with only four, and you can, over time, as this element, uh, as this lab goes up, you can hold more uh, elements on your board. Also, if you get this thing moved up to two here, we see a book. And this gets us into the special abilities of the game, because in this case, I would get uh, one of these nice little books here. Let's talk about some of these special abilities. For example, that journal book. Now, anytime I, I finish a compound, when I'm taking the elements off, I can take any one of those and put, the, put it back on my board instead of throwing them all back, which is pretty huge. And some other compounds, how you get special abilities is if I was to complete this compound, I actually get to get one of these pipette um, markers and place it on my board here like that. And they do certain cool things like, you know, uh, in my research, instead of having to trade three elements for any one in the bag, I can trade just two. Uh, and, you know, the graduated cylinder is in the lab phase. I can move any one experiment I own down one level and move one up one level. So I could pretty much like swap this if I wanted to. So there's sort of some special abilities. We also have things like if I completed this compound, we see the goggles, which kind of gets me this special ability if I had completed that one. And these blue ones are sort of one-time use, like the goggles and the lab key. And for example, the, the, the goggles let you... Uh, pull, you know, let's see, research and pull more elements at the end of the research phase to give you some more stuff, but it's a one-time use. You also have a Bunsen burner, which allows you to create uh, fires in the lab. So let's talk about how fires work. Now, as you can see, some of these elements have some flammable uh, icons on here. What this means is that um, in a lab fire, which I'll talk about later, or if somebody in the research phase wants to use their Bunsen burner, they can essentially... Uh, put a fire to any of the compounds. Now using the Bunsen burner, he can actually use it to any compound, but essentially this one only has a flammable of one. So if he puts this here, this would actually explode and be removed from the game. This could be really useful if let's say orange was already on here with a clay marker and he already had two and he was trying to get the sulfur and you Bunsen burner this out and this thing explodes. He's gonna lose this. He's gonna get his clay marker back. This is gonna get discarded from the game and these would explode and move over to adjacent uh, uh, compound. So for example, if we zoom out here a little bit, uh, we would see if this was the case, then the person who had owned this gets to say which around do these go to. He could have them go here, or he could have them go here. Anywhere around diagonally, all the spots around this, these go. If nobody owned it, the person with the uh, lab key gets to put it. So this would have gotten exploded and those elements would have went to another uh, compound. It's a really good way to mess your friends up. Another way to start lab fires is in the lab, at the end of the lab phase, when you're refilling it, if you pull out off the top of the, the element deck here, if we pull out a lab fire, then a fire actually happens here, and everything that has a flammable token on it would be would get some fire. 
And anything that has two is still alive. If anything had just one, it would explode like normal. If one of these already had one, and it needed a second one, it would then explode. So lab fires uh, continue to, to, to kind of set off chain reactions and explode things uh, in the lab. And this would have gotten uh, replaced like that. And that's sort of how lab fires work. Now there is a way to protect against fires. Uh, let's say when you're placing elements, you have your little uh, CO2 here, carbon, uh, your fire extinguisher. If over the course of the game, you're able to fill this up, uh, this gets flipped over and you now have a working fire extinguisher. And if somebody or some one of your compounds was about to get be uh, exploded or put on fire, you can use this to put that fire out as a one-time basis. Um, but if you don't use this, it's worth four points into the game. But if you use it, it can save a compound. Now the game ends when either somebody has 50 points or someone has three of their four test tubes all the way to the top or when this deck runs out of cards of elements. Now, if you uh, if if the three to four test tubes or someone gets to 50, you have one more round. If you run out of cards, it pretty much ends right away. And at the end of the game, the one with the most points is the winner. All right, well, there's Compounded. Well, let me tell you about what I liked about the game first. Um, it was interesting. It's a, it's a great, fresh theme. I don't know too many games about chemistry, and I thought that was very interesting the way that they played it out. Um, the periodic tables of the scoreboard, awesome. The different special abilities you can get with the journal and the goggles and the lab key, cool. Thematically, it was awesome. I loved the theme of this. I loved how it was different. Um, you know, you, when you when you peel back the onion, look at the, the mechanics of the game, uh, you know, it is sort of that Euro hybrid with American game. Because, you know, if you're a true uh, Euro gamer, um, you might not like this because when you can purposely set lab fires using that Bunsen burner to other people's creations and totally screw them up, which will happen, the diehard Euro gamer might not like this because of that. Of course, you could always take the Bunsen burners out if you want, and then it would just be more random like the lab fires. Um, and the total Ameritrash type of player might not like it either uh, because it is does feel very Euro-y. There's, there's I like there's a lot of decisions to make. I like that. Um, do I go after liquid solids or gas? Do I want my discovery level to go up or do I want to, you know, get more uh, elements at the beginning? Or do I want to be able to hold more elements? Uh, or do I be, want to be able to put more claim tokens out? Or do I want to be able to place more elements out? You have those four different tracks that you're able to move up and down on uh, depending on the types of compounds that you go over. Do you go for the compounds that have the extra special things that won't give you as many points, but give you some special abilities? When do you use those special abilities? Do you press your luck, it has a press your luck element where you can press your luck and go for that one that only has one fire uh, icon on it, knowing that if somebody uses a Bunsen burner or a lab fire comes up or a chemical reaction comes up, you could have already dropped sulfur, a very rare element, and boom, it's gone. Uh, so there's press your luck, it's sort of like feels a little bit almost like worker placement, even though it's not really um, putting it down. Uh, so there's a lot of things I liked about the game. A um, few things I didn't like about the game. Uh, first and foremost, I think the biggest problem I have with this game is it just took too long to play. Even after knowing the game and not, ha not having to look at the rule book, you go through those four phases. Uh, it does start to feel a little repetitive after time. Um, and it just, it took too long. I mean, even a game of three people that knew how to play the game took us just over, like, just over 90 minutes, like 91 minutes. And it just felt like it should have been over about a half hour before that. Um, and I played it with two players. I actually like the two player variant in this. I typically don't like those automated third player things, but this one actually wasn't bad because it allows you to trade. Oh, that's another thing. I did love the trading in this. Any game where you can have negotiation and trading, I'm going to love it. So I did love the negotiating and trading. It really added a lot to this game. Uh, but just it just really felt like it took too long for me. Um, even with three, it was too long. Four and five, forget about it. I would never play this with four or five, ever. Uh, two, it was okay. It was decent. I didn't mind the, the extra guy. Three was probably the sweet spot for me. But even then, it still took too long. Um, so it overstayed its welcome. But there's a lot of good things there. Cool theme, pressure luck, euro, hurt each other, negotiation. Ugh, I'm kind of torn on this one because there's a lot of things I liked. Uh, but in, at the end, it, I don't know how often it's going to come off my shelf because it just takes too long. And I feel like it, uh, it just overstays its welcome. So, Euro, American, in the middle, lots of different things to like, a couple things not to like. Now it's up to you. Do you want it? Check it out. If it still interests you after this, uh, it's Dice Hate Me Games, Compounded.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>